third chapter, let's just look in verse uh, 8 for time's sake, because we're going to do this a little differently, this passage tonight. He said, the uh, scripture, Galatians 3, 8, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel to Abraham, saying, in you shall all nations be blessed. Very significant, like all the things in the Word. The Scripture said God preached the gospel, and, and the, the Greek here is not just preached the gospel, but preached the gospel ahead of time. It's a little different word from preaching the gospel. Preaching the gospel ahead of time. And he did it to Abraham. Now what did Abraham hear that you would call the gospel? Well, we're given a quote, a partial quote right here. In you shall all nations be blessed. Here, the Holy Spirit calls that the gospel. Right? Right? And further, you know, we've been on this, like we said, for some, some time now. And the further I go into it, the more I, I see how inseparable what we're looking at in this passage is from what the Bible calls the gospel. The gospel. Let's keep reading. He said, uh, so then they which be of faith are, are blessed with faithful Abraham. So the blessed he's talking about is referring back to what the Spirit of God called the gospel. Is there blessing in the gospel? How many think it's, oh, it's here, it's here. Uh, in verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now let's just stop right here. The word gospel means good news. Is that good news? Yes. Christ has redeemed us yes. from the curse of the law. So all this flows together. It wasn't written in chapter and verse. He hadn't changed subjects. He was talking about the gospel. Now he's talking about, talking about redemption. Same. He's, talking about, he's on the same thing. Redeemed from what though? A lot of Christians will say, you know, I'm redeemed, but they stop right there. What does that mean? You redeemed from what to what? Redeemed from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it's written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Is that good news also? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. We're, it's good news we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. That's really good news. And we have received now the, the blessing of Abraham and the promised Holy Spirit. Is that good news? Good news. Good news all around. <laughs> right? Now, I had not seen this till we got into this study, how much emphasis there was on the gospel in this passage. But in order to help you see, if you hadn't seen it already, what I'm talking about, we're going to go back to Galatians 1.1. And we're going to read from there to here. Hallelujah. It'll, it'll take a couple of minutes, but not too long. <laughs> Just, uh, you'll find, and every time you see gospel, I want you to say it out loud with me when I read it in the text. You'll find it's just in these couple of chapters, you'll find it some dozen times. Gospel. And that doesn't cover all of it because the word for gospel and the word for preached are very similar. A lot of times it means a very similar thing because you are to proclaim or preach the gospel. Uh, the Bible said that Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching 
the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Notice how it distinguishes between teaching and preaching. Teaching, some, one person said it like this, uh, teaching is explaining, preaching is proclaiming. Well, what is the gospel? Good news. Well, to proclaim it is not just to try to detail, explain it, it's to announce the good news. Amen. Huh? Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like somebody, you know, uh, hawking a newspaper. Read all about it. <laughs> right? <laughs> and... Uh, uh, it is, the, the gospel is all good news. Amen. Now back up to Galatians 1. We just got through praying and asking the Lord to speak to us. Do you believe he'll speak to you through his word right now? Amen. Now there's all kind of things in here, but tell me what we're looking for right now. Gospel. The gospel. And again also when it says preach, Amen. if you look up those words you'll find they're, they're connected. To the gospel, because that's what Paul preached, and Peter, and all these guys. Galatians 1 1. Paul, an apostle, not of man, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. That is the culmination of the gospel. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He, uh, he was born of a virgin. He walked victoriously in the earth and he preached the gospel himself. He took our place on the cross. He went to the heart of the earth. He was judged in our place and the culmination, the exclamation point is on the third day. He was raised from the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's not just amazing that it happened for him because he didn't need it to happen for him. He didn't have any sin to pay for. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't doing any of this for him. Mm -hmm. He did it for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when he, was, when he uh, paid the price on the cross, it was our price he paid. Yeah. When he was raised from the dead, it's our resurrection. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the good news. Yeah. Keep reading. I, I can't preach on every one of these verses, can I? I will. <laughs> It'll take us another couple of months to get there. All the brethren which are with me uh, and the churches, uh, to the churches of Galatia, grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our, the, and, and our Father. Is that part of the gospel? Yeah. Absolutely. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you to the grace of Christ unto another gospel. gospel, gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. It's, uh, it's, a, it's appropriate to refer to the gospel with the article, the are the. In fact, both of them could be capitalized. The gospel. Because as you see, the Spirit of God through him is saying in the strongest of terms, there is only one gospel. There are no others. There are those that people call gospel, but they are not. Only one. Verse 8. Though we, now boy, he, uh, he limits himself here, doesn't he? Right. Oh, yeah. He can't come back later <laughs> and change what he preached. Mm -hmm. Though we are an angel from heaven, wow, wow. <laughs> even a messenger mm -hmm. from, from heaven mm -hmm. cannot change the gospel. If we preach any other gospel to you than that which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Like I said, the strongest of language. Let him be separated from God 
and devoted to destruction. Anathema. I mean, this is, I don't know how you could say it any stronger. Why, why, why be so strong about this? Because, according to Romans 1, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Amen. According to 2 Corinthians 4, the reason the whole world that is lost is lying under the power of the evil one in darkness is because their minds and eyes have been blinded to the gospel. The gospel. There's talk about spiritual warfare, and there is spiritual warfare, but it's not how some people have imagined it to be. The big thing spiritual warfare is about, some people might say, well, it's about souls. It is, but more specifically, it's about light. Light. And the light is the light of the gospel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The light, if you want to attack the kingdom of darkness, go tell somebody the gospel. Amen. It's a direct assault. Yes. And if you get them born again, you incurred a casualty <laughs> on the enemy's side. Can you see that? Amen. We got a new soldier and a living stone, and they lost one. <laughs> this is real. But, but now we're in, in chapter 1 and verse 8, and our, and our study has been about being redeemed from the curse of the law in chapter 3. And how many remember how that happened? Jesus became uh, cursed for us. So see, that had already been brought, this concept of being accursed had already been brought up in the very beginning of the, the, the book here and is in connection with the gospel. Right? You cannot separate the, the revelation of cursing and blessing from the gospel. If you do, you're missing big parts of it. Keep reading, verse 9. We, as we say before, so say I now again. How many understand? If the Spirit of God inspired it one time, it's important. If he, if he immediately repeats it mm. verbatim, <laughs> what, uh, that's why I say he said it in the strongest possible terms. If anybody preach any other gospel to you than that you have received, than what I preached to you the first time you heard me, let him be anathema, separated from God, and devoted to destruction. Serious. <laughs> Verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God? Do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Uh, Jesus said you can't serve two masters. Keep going. I certify you, brethren, that the, the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. And you'll find now he begins to go into great detail. And it's not just him, it's the Spirit of God through him detailing how that the gospel he preached and preaches was not a work in progress. It was not a construct. It was not the result of the fruit of a committee of ministers or theologians. He's very, he said, I didn't get it from any man. Keep reading. Neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. In other words, by man. I got it by, we might say, direct revelation of Jesus Christ. Where'd you get it? From the head of the church directly. You know, Paul met him on the road to Damascus when he was uh, trying to destroy the church, right? And the Lord appeared to him multiple times after that. And so uh, this is also one of the marks of a true apostle is that they receive revelation that they haven't heard from other people. Foundational revelation. Now, it's always going to agree with the Word of God, right? And everything else the Lord said. Verse uh, 13, 
You have heard of my conversation, my way of life in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Keep going. I profited in the Jews' religion above many of my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. He was on the move. He was up and coming. He was the Pharisee's poster child. Yes, he was. <laughs> and he, he really thought that this Christianity thing was a cult and heresy. And he thought he was doing the right thing to stamp it out. You know, we, we need to pray for people and have mercy because sometimes even though people are so far off, they think they're right. They believe the wrong things. And you see his heart because as soon as he found out he was wrong, he was even stronger for the Lord. <laughs> Can you see that? Then he used to be trying to destroy. When it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him. That's another reference to the gospel. Among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. In the beginning, he didn't talk to, I, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. Why is he going to, not just him, but the Holy Spirit, going into this background and this detail because the origin of the original and one and only gospel is so important. There's only one. There will never be another. There will never be a modified one or a different one. Amen. He said, though, though myself or an angel from heaven preach anything different to you, if they try to, let them be a separated from God and devoted to destruction. In other words, they're liars and deceivers because this is not the product of a man or men. This didn't come through study. This didn't come through reasoning. This came through direct revelation from the head of the church. Amen. Amen. And, and it's so important that we don't add to it or take from it or change it or modify it. We, we'll see this a little bit later on, but this is, this is how the term some many years ago, turn of the century, full gospel came to be because over the centuries different groups actually stripped off of the gospel different parts of the gospel. Well you think about why would it sound strange to people that the blessing is part of the gospel? Hmm? See that sounds strange to many people today. Oh that's that you know, blab it, grab it, confess it, possess it, you know, uh, prosperity gospel bunch. No, it's Galatians 3.8. It's Genesis 12. It's all these passages. But, but why would it sound strange? Because things have been stripped off and stripped out of the gospel until in many cases the only part of the gospel remaining is salvation from hell. And that is not the full gospel. The, that, that is, is a stripped version of the gospel. Uh, he said, I, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem. I saw Peter, stayed with him 15 days. But now you got to understand, this is after he's been preaching what he's been preaching three years. He wants them to know, I didn't get this from Peter. I didn't get this from James. I didn't get this from any of the apostles. Where did he get it? According to the Holy Spirit, through him, direct from Jesus. Other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write to you, behold, before God, I lie not. He said, I'm telling you the truth. Afterwards, I came to the regions of Syria and Cilicia. I was unknown by face to the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. We were, they didn't know who I was. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith 
which once he destroyed. This is a miracle. And they glorified God in me. And some of them probably said, well, I reckon God can save anybody. <laughs> right? Man, if he can save Saul, make an apostle and a preacher out of him, nothing's too hard for the Lord. Chapter 2. See, we're moving along. Right? <laughs> then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem and Bar with Barnabas. I took Titus with me also. I went up by revelation. You notice he keeps bringing this up. Revelation. There's a vast difference between reasoning and revelation. Revelation is not the result of effort and intelligence or even study. Now, you should read. You should study. And, you, you know, the Lord will help you to become more intelligent. But through application of uh, effort, you cannot get revelation. Reveal, think about what it means. Reveal means to uncover. Amen. Hmm? Well, you can't uncover it. <laughs> to you, it's covered until the great teacher, the Holy Spirit, guides you into all the truth, even reveals and shows you things to come. I went up by revelation, communicated to them the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. He, he presented to them what he had been preaching for all this time. Neither Titus, who was with me being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the what? The truth of the gospel might continue with you. Can you see why I'm reading all this? Why? What's the emphasis? What's the Holy Spirit talking about? The one and only, the original, unchanging, eternal gospel. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatever they were, it makes no matter to me. God accepts no man's person. <laughs> For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. In other words, when they heard the gospel he preached, nobody said, no, that's not right. No, Peter didn't say it. None of the other guys, they, they all gave him the thumbs up. They go, yeah. <laughs> That's the same gospel we preach. Right? And if this person gets something from the Holy Spirit, and this person gets something from the Holy Spirit, how many know it's going to match? Amen. Came from the same source. Contrarywise, when they saw the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed to me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, he that wrought effectively in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. He's preaching the gospel to uh, non-Jewish people. They're preaching the gospel to uh, Jewish people. When James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given to me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go to the heathen, and they to the circumcision. In other words, they, they gave them their approval. They said, yeah, you're preaching the one and only original gospel. Amen. Stay with it. <laughs> Don't change it. <laughs> right? There you go. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. And you'll see in his letters to the saints at Corinth, he talks about that. And they, the churches at Corinth received a big offering and they sent it to the, the poor saints in Jerusalem when they were going through some tough times. Uh, but when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. So they had a little issue here. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, which, were, you know, you weren't supposed to do according to ordinances in the law. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself. He wouldn't eat with them anymore when the other Jewish folks got there, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him insomuch that Barnabas 
was carried away with their dissimulation. In other words, he quit eating with the Gentiles too when the Jewish people got to town. But when I saw that they, those two and others, walked not uprightly according to the gospel. To what? The, gospel. the truth of the, gospel. of the gospel. I said to Peter before them all, if you being a Jew live after the manner of Gentiles, not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? You're being inconsistent here, bud. <laughs> right? You're one way when the Jewish folks are not in town. You're another way when the Jewish folks are in town. We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Now he repeats that exact phrase in the third chapter, next chapter, right before he gets to being redeemed from the curse. All this flows together. If while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. It's either right to tear it down or it's right to build it. It's not right to do both. Tear it down one week, build it the next week. One of, one of them's wrong. You're doing the wrong thing. For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live to God. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Can you identify with that? Why don't you just, everybody, say that out loud right now. Back, back up to verse 20. Say it out loud with me. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise God. Are you happy? I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain for nothing. Now this is the third chapter where we've been reading verse 13 and 14. So how does it kick off? Oh foolish Galatians. What happened to you? Huh? Let me just paraphrase a little bit. I came and preached the one and only original unchanging eternal gospel to you. You got saved. You got excited. You were walking by faith. Yeah. Huh? And I leave you for a little while and I come back and you're trying to be justified by keeping the law. What happened to you? Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth crucified among you? Is that part of the gospel? Yeah. Absolutely. Keep reading. This only would I learn of you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law, by keeping the law? No. Nobody received the Holy Spirit, spoke in tongues over there, because they kept the law. Or, how did you receive the Holy Spirit? Faith comes by hearing. Right? You heard the Word. You acted on it. You received. Verse 3. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh. Have you suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain. In the latter part of this book. He gets to talking about being persecuted. For the gospel. If you preach religion. And, and, and uh, social reform. And moral standards. You will not be persecuted. But if you preach being good. You won't be persecuted. And of course that all changes every few years. What society holds as an acceptable standard. So you've got to be socially correct and politically correct. But that all goes with the flow. But if you preach the gospel. 
which has not changed Amen. for thousands of years Amen. and will never change. Somebody said, well, we, we need to update our message for the current generation. Whoa, whoa, Amen. whoa. Huh? Yeah. That's not what this sounds like. We, we, need to, we need to update our message so it's more relevant. No. To, to who? <laughs> to what? <laughs> There's only one original gospel. It is unchanging forever. It is called the eternal good news. Can you say amen? Amen. Any modification makes it a different gospel. And what did you say about that? Though we, myself, or an angel from heaven, come and preach to you any different thing than what I preach to you, let him be accursed. He therefore that ministers to you the Spirit and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law? Did y'all get those healings by keeping the law? He was saying, when I was with you in Galatia, we had healings. We had miracles. People got filled with the Spirit. You, you, do, you do know that the Ephesians were tongue talkers, and the Galatians were tongue talkers, and the Colossians were tongue talkers, and the Corinthians talked in tongues so much they had to have some instruction. Huh? Do you know that? I think a lot of people have forgotten about that. All these people spoke in tongues. You see it in the book of Acts. You see it in other places. So he that ministered to you, back up again, verse 5, he that ministered to you the Spirit and worked miracles among you, did he do it by the works of the law? Did y'all get healed while we were there by keeping the law? No. Did you get filled with the Spirit by keeping the law? No. No. How'd you do it? By faith. By the workings of faith. Hearing, you heard faith from the Word and you got faith and you released faith. You believed you received. You acted on it. You got filled with the Spirit. You spoke in tongues. You got healed. You got delivered. That's the way it worked then. That's the way it works now. Now let's just stop. I had a guy tell me one time, tried to take me to task. He said, well now, we don't preach all that healing stuff that y'all preach. We just preach the gospel. <laughs> A lot of people think that. We don't, we don't preach all that uh, prosperity, abundant stuff. We just preach the gospel. Now hold on. We've already seen multiple times that the blessing Amen. is part of, is called the gospel. Amen. Can you see why I'm taking the time to talk about this? People have stripped things off of both sides of the gospel and call it, and it is, what they're preaching is the gospel, but it's a part. And I'm not saying we know everything there is to know about the gospel, but you ought to preach everything you know about it. And instead of focusing on uh, this group or that group's version of the gospel uh, or the so-called part gospel or so-called full gospel, the thing we should be emphasizing is to preach the same gospel. Amen. Amen. Don't, you, don't you agree? Yes. The same gospel that Paul preached, Amen. that Peter preached, that Jesus preached, yes. that Abraham heard. Yes. How many would agree? That's the biggest thing we ought to focus on, the same gospel. In fact, let's just let's release, release faith right now. Say, Father God, Father God reveal, to us reveal to us the same gospel, the same gospel that, was that was revealed in these days we're reading about. The same gospel, the same gospel Peter, preached, Peter preached, Paul preached, Paul preached James preached, James preached Jesus preached. Jesus. The same gospel any variants, any changes, any modifications that have happened in following generations, reveal it to us and help us to see and hear and believe and teach and preach the same gospel once delivered out of heaven 
to the earth. earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. The same. The same gospel. Just, Just hold your place right here and go back to the book of Acts. 14th chapter. Acts chapter 14. You do see that we have made it to chapter 3. <laughs> We're just a couple of verses away from where we started. So the Lord helped us. In uh, Acts chapter 14. We see... Um, Let me introduce this a little bit before you you read this, but you're in the right place if you're in chapter 14. Um, I mentioned to you that the man said, we don't preach that healing stuff. We just preach the gospel. The scripture said with Jesus, I'm going to read this and then we'll read the the Acts part. In Matthew 4.23, don't try to turn there. Just read it off the screen if you want to. I quoted it, but let's read it. Jesus went about all Galilee, Matthew 4, 23, teaching in their synagogues and preaching what? The gospel gospel of the kingdom and and, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Skip to the ninth chapter, verse 35, 9, 35. It says it again, Jesus went about all their cities and villages. So this wasn't just done a time or two. All their cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and doing what? Preaching Preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Luke 9, verse 6. Luke 9, verse 6 said they departed and they went through the towns doing what? Preaching the gospel and what? Healing everywhere. Is there a connection between the gospel and healing? Oh, you better believe it. Gospel and healing are inseparable. And though many have not believed it, gospel and abundance are inseparable. Because abundance is a result of blessing. And it should be confirmed, we spent a lot of time in Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus and other places seeing the curse of the law, which included problems in the eyes, the ears, the knees, the arms, the botch of Egypt, emeralds, fevers, swellings, and every sickness and every disease that has not been named, Right? As well as all those that have been named is definitely a part of the curse of the law. And according to Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Is that good news? It's good news. But but in most of the world, most church-going people, healing is not seen as integral part of the gospel. It's a side message. And with a lot of people, it's a heretical message. Well, then, if you take healing out, and that's what Jesus preached and Paul preached and Peter preached, you got a different gospel than what they preached. Hmm? You remember in Luke 4, well, let's just turn there. In Luke 4, you're, you're there close by. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord, what is it, 4, 16 or so, or down to 18? Yeah, put up 4, 18. Thank you. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to do what? Preach to do what? Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. So, man, this gospel's been around. Abraham heard the gospel. Long time before Jesus walked the earth. Jesus heard and preached the gospel. Long time before Paul and Peter preached it. Preached the gospel to who? The poor. What would would be good news to the poor? 
He sent me to do what? Heal. Is that good news? Is that part of the gospel? The, the broken heart. To preach deliverance to the captives. Recovering of sight to the blind. Set at liberty them that are bruised. Is this all good news? And this is all part of the gospel. Went on to say to preach the acceptable day, a year rather, of the Lord. This is the gospel. Did you find Acts 14? The Bible said in verse uh, 6 that Paul and his company were being persecuted and they fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lycaonia, region that lies round about. Verse 7, and there they did what? They did what? Reckon what we should do. <laughs> they preached their, their truth. <laughs> huh? Their own personal truth. No. Their, their version of the gospel. No, there's only one gospel. The original. They preached the gospel. Keep reading. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he what? Had faith. That he what? Had faith. That he what? Had faith. had faith to be healed. Now let's just stop. Where did he get faith to be healed? Huh? Does anybody remember how faith comes? How does faith come? What did he just hear? Verse 7. There they preached the gospel. What did that man hear? The gospel. And from hearing the gospel, he got faith to be healed. You can't get faith for something you don't hear about. So if nobody ever gets faith to be healed from hearing what somebody is calling the gospel, it's not the same gospel Paul preached or what Jesus preached. Because when they preached the gospel, people got faith to be healed. And we don't have to wonder what they preached. Jesus said in Matthew 8, he ministered and healed everybody that came that it might be fulfilled. Well, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah saying himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, carried our pains. Jesus preached this. Can you see the gospel has been changed, has been modified. We don't want to do that. We want to preach the same. Oh, somebody say the same. The same. The same. And when Paul saw that man and perceived that he had faith to be healed from hearing what he just preached, what the Bible calls the gospel, he told him, stand up right on your feet and got him to act on that faith and he was immediately healed. Thank God for the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation to all. To everyone who believes. Do you believe it? Go back to Galatians 3. Let's finish reading this passage. Verse 4, we got down to verse 5. Verse 6. See if this sounds familiar to you. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. Faith, faith, believing, faith. Preached before the gospel to Abraham saying in you shall all nations be blessed. Can you see why Blessing is an integral part of the gospel. Amen. The gospel they preached, the gospel they got from the head of the church included healing Hallelujah. and deliverance Hallelujah. and blessing. Come on, can you see that? If we're preaching the same gospel they preached, 
We're going to be getting faith to be delivered. Faith to be free from the curse of the law. Faith to have abundance and walk in the fullness of the blessing of Abraham. Faith to be healed. Faith to be filled with the Spirit. Faith to be free from condemnation and shame because we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. That's the same gospel. Not a stripped down version. Not a modern version. Not an adapted version. I, I released faith a while ago. Did you? Anything we need to see about what we've been preaching and believing that's any different from what Jesus gave Paul <laughs> and what Jesus preached himself, the Lord will show us. Yeah. Amen. 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 And it'll, it's all in the Word. It has not changed. It's not going to change. Thank God for the gospel. Does anybody like the gospel around here? Thank God for the gospel. Thank God. Let's just lift our hands. Let's just thank him. Now, Father, we thank you. Thank you for the eternal, everlasting, unchanging gospel. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let me, let me read a couple of verses to you. Um, go, go to Romans and then we'll do it this way. Go to Romans, please. Hallelujah. The uh, tenth chapter says it like this. There's a there's a couple of phrases. I know this is not just line upon line, but there's things I'm I'm proclaiming to you. I believe will just get in your spirit, Amen. and it'll come back to you at the right time in the right place. Uh, in Romans ten fifteen. He said, how shall they preach except they be sent? Well, preach what? <laughs> there you go. Uh, as it's written, how beautiful are the feet of them that do what? Preach the gospel of peace. The, the gospel's called the gospel of truth. It's called the gospel of grace. It's called the gospel of peace. It's called the gospel of our salvation. Yeah. It has a lot of wonderful titles. But that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. This, this is a definition of the word gospel. What is gospel? It means uh, just this right here, tidings. But not just good Tidings, is we don't usually use that in our vernacular. We'd use the word news. A piece of news is what a tiding is. So the, the good news is also news that makes you glad. Amen. <laughs> if it doesn't make you glad, <laughs> it's not the good news. Amen. It's not the gospel. <laughs> Either that or you don't believe it. You just reject it and don't believe it. But, uh, uh, you know, you're going to hell if you don't change is a message, but it's not the good news. Right. Yeah. That's bad news. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah. right. <laughs> and the good news is Jesus went in your place. Yes, he, did. he took your place. He paid the price. He was raised from the dead, uh, free from it. He redeemed you from the curse. He redeemed you from the judgment. He got you the blessing of Abraham. He got you the Holy Spirit from heaven. Hallelujah. Somebody say, good news, good news, good news, good news. Good news. Good news. Now, if you say, I don't believe all that, I don't believe in all that junk, well, then there's nothing left for you but bad news. <laughs> you are going to hell if you don't change. But don't just go around giving people the bad news first. Give them the good news, yeah. right? And then if they accept it and believe it, you got no bad news to give them. It's just good news. But the good news, the gospel, makes you glad. Because it's glad tidings are news of good things. What is the gospel? 
The gospel is the good news of all the good things our good God has given us in Jesus, in the Christ. <laughs> right? It starts with good, it's good in the middle, and it, it ends with good. Why? Because God is good. Amen. He's good, and his work of redemption is certainly good. 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 Oh, somebody say good. Good, good, good. Good, good. Go to Ephesians 3. Another term for the gospel you'll see in this passage. Actually, uh, there, there are a number of similarities in Ephesians as in Colossians, they're written to two different churches and two different groups of people. But uh, it's not unusual that he'd be saying similar things to them because the gospel doesn't change. And uh, in Ephesians 3, verse 1, Ephesians 3, 1, he said, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you've heard of the dispensation of grace of God which is given me to you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Now we already know from reading Galatians what mystery he's talking about. Has to do with the gospel. As I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it's now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Hallelujah. Well, we just got through reading in Galatians 3. We who were Gentiles outside of the covenant of God by faith in Jesus, we've been made the seed of Abraham. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. And inherited from him the, the blessing that God gave him. Keep reading. Wherefore I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. To me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles. Here's another name for the gospel. The unsearchable riches of Christ. How many good things did he give us? unsearchable riches. We, we know some of the main things, but we don't, the half has not been told <laughs> of everything that comes under those umbrellas. Somebody said out loud, the gospel, the good news, the unsearchable riches of Christ. Oh, praise God. Oh, somebody say glory to God. Glory, glory to God. Glory. Thank God for the gospel. Thank you, Lord, for the gospel. Thank you, Lord, for the gospel. Thank you, Lord, for the gospel. Matthew 24, put that up, please. Matthew 24, 11 tells us why, one of the big reasons, why Jesus has not yet returned. If you read the passage in Peter, it said that the Lord is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. That's what's going on. That's why he hadn't, hadn't already come. He warns us that in the end times many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many and reckon what they'll preach. Different messages, right? Altered gospels. Because, of iniqu because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And Jesus said, and this gospel, which one? <laughs> the one and only. Original, right? <laughs> Unchanging. Everlasting gospel shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Somebody says, well, man, this has been going on for centuries. Surely that's already happened. Well, you can tell by him not being here yet that it has not happened. What do you mean? 
Religion has been preached. Conduct has been preached. Works has been preached. All manner of things have been preached, but not what Jesus is talking about, this gospel. This gospel. When this gospel is preached in all the world for a witness to all, everybody say all, 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 all the world, all nations, without any exceptions, then, Jesus said, the end will come. The end will come. That's why in Mark 16, 15, the Great Commission is this. <laughs> right? What's the Great Commission? Go into all the world and feed people. Clothe people. Huh? Build houses. No? Now see, th those are good things. We, we've been involved in different ones of these things. But there are many, many churches, they have substituted that for this. And even leave the impression that a big part of you making heaven is how many good deeds you do. How good of a person. That's a different gospel. That's not the gospel Jesus preached. That's not the gospel Paul preached. That if you'd be a good enough person and you'd give enough of your uh, monies and your time to help people in need, that you'd go to heaven. That's a untrue gospel. That is not right. We want to help people. But the greatest need of every man, woman, and child on the planet mm -hmm. is spiritual. Yes, it is. I said spiritual. And no matter what you do, you can spend every penny you ever get. You can give yourself every moment and every ounce of strength working for somebody else. You will not touch the needs of the world. You might help a few people, but of the seven billion and the massive need that is on this planet, you could take all the money from every rich person and it would be a drop in the bucket. It will not. People preach that you can fix it that way. It's a lie. Why? If it was true, man could meet his own needs and wouldn't need God and wouldn't need a Savior. There is one and only one that can meet all the needs of all the world. Spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, family, financially, he is the Almighty and the gift he has given is his Son. Jesus. And the good news is the way to the salvation. It's the power of God to all who believe. Can God meet everybody's need? Yes, he can. There are all kinds of things money can't buy, can't begin to buy. You can't buy healing. You can't buy deliverance. You can't buy restoration. But God's got it all. The big thing that every one of us needs is to know God and to know how to receive from him and to know how to walk and live with him. How do you get that? How do you get that? Not by hearing about social reform. Huh? Not by hearing about moral standards. There's something more important than all of that. That's why the Great Commission Help me out. Is to go. Go. Jesus said go. Into all the world. Help me out. Help me out. Preach the. The one and only. Preach the gospel. To every created being. See this is in line with the other things he said. Every, every person. Every nation. Everywhere. Preach the gospel to every created being. And he that believes and is baptized, that's acting on what you believe. Baptism is a graphic physical picture of the gospel. Right? 
Jesus died, he was buried, and he was raised from the dead. <laughs> it's a public identification with the one and only gospel. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. This is the most important thing you and I can be doing as a church. Amen. Thank God for anything else we can do. But the most important thing is the preaching of this good news. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we know from our study now in Galatians 3 that a big part of the good news is that we've been redeemed. Yes. Right? Yes. Well, well, think about it. What, what is the good news? People say, well, Jesus came. He was born of a virgin. He, he died and paid the price on the cross. And he was raised from the dead. And he was caught up to, to, to heaven. To sit down at the right hand of God. Amen. 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 Why? Why did he do that? Right? Why did he do that? Don't just stop there. Why? What did that get us? What did that do for us? Huh? <laughs> Come on, help me out, saints. Yes. What did that do for us? When he hung on the cross, he became accursed. Yes. Because it is written way back in Deuteronomy, long ago, it was written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Why would he let them do that to them? Why? To him. Why? Why? He took our place. We were in trouble. We were accursed. We deserved the curse of the law. We deserved the judgment. And we had no way out. We couldn't fix it. We couldn't save ourselves. So God so loved the world. Is this good news or not? God so loved the world that he sent. Hallelujah. His only begotten son. And Jesus so loved us that he went. He came. And, and became like other men, took on the form, not of angels, but of mankind. And lived a perfect life so he could be a perfect, sinless, spotless, substitutionary sacrifice. The spotless lamb of God. And so he did offer himself and he was sacrificed. But what's the good news about, why? What did it get for us? What happened? It redeemed us from every evil thing mentioned in Deuteronomy 28. Is there a lot there we've been redeemed from? And it qualified us and made us the seed of Abraham and got the blessing of Abraham for us, which is an empowerment to get every good thing and to enjoy every good thing and to be able to live in the rest of God and to even advance until we have abundance to give that we can give and be used of God for blessing to flow to and flow through. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And if we really believe it, what Jesus said, how many would like to just go ahead and wind this thing up and get out of here and be through with this uh, uh, curse-filled earth and all these evil spirits down here and, and all these unbelievers and mean folks. Huh? How many wouldn't mind hearing the trumpet in the morning? Or tonight would be fine. <laughs> Y'all with me or not? Hearing that trumpet and the sky splitting and you and I blowing this popsicle stand. I mean, we're out of here. How, how many think that could be a great thing? We're, we're out of here. We're done with being tired. We're no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more dying, no more crying, no more pain. That's right. Glory. Well, according to Jesus, we know what the holdup is. Not, not preaching religion, not preaching moral standards, not preaching this one or that one's idea and concept, their truth. The gospel, the original, the unchanging, the one and only, everlasting gospel. When that is preached over the whole world, 
Jesus said, then that'll be it. The end will come. Hallelujah. 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 So what can we do? What can we do? We can pray and give and send laborers. Huh? We can answer the call and some go and some send. And everybody have a part of getting this gospel out everywhere. Everywhere. Taking the Great Commission very seriously. When we open our eyes in the morning thinking, okay, how can we get this gospel to places and people that have not heard it before? How can we get it? How can we get it? I mean, you think about uh, uh, James and Patty were just here, you know, from South Pacific uh, during the meeting. And um, uh, not too long ago, they took the ship, the gospel ship, (laughs) it's their ship, to an island and the people there had never heard of Adam and Eve or Genesis or Jesus. Well, that right there, has the gospel been preached everywhere? They never heard it. It was a total new thing to them. They'd never heard it before. But pretty much the whole village, I think, accepted Jesus. And then they said, any other villages? They said, yeah, over on the other side. And so they all followed them to the other place. And then they preached to them. They all received Jesus. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. And when that happened, what happened? You and I got another click closer to getting out of here. To being done. In all the regular mundane activities of life, we do not need to lose sight of this. Our life is not just about getting up, going to work, coming home, washing the clothes, cutting the grass, taking the bath, right? You got to watch because you just get into the routine. What? We're here for a purpose. We're here for such a time as this, right? And all of us. How many understand everybody who gave offerings previous weeks and months, they helped us preach the gospel here tonight. Everybody that vacuumed the floors and and wiped down seats, everybody that's ministering to the children, everybody working in the parking lot, everybody on these cameras, everybody on these overhead screens, soundboard, singing, play. All of this is what? About proclaiming the good news of what Jesus has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And one of the big things he did is redeem us from the curse of the law. Stand on your feet, everybody.